Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the early recap. It's shortly after two o'clock on Friday, uh, and we're going to recap the day. Just to, you know, just a touch early, about an hour and a half left in the trading day. Um, so let's take a look here at what we uh, what we dealt with this week. You know, wh where the action was. You know, where money was made. Um, you know, I think that's really the best way to take take an approach here on, on this Friday afternoon, this summer Friday. Uh, as I said uh, early today on the VTF, for those that you know were, you know, tuned in at the open, right now it is a day trading, short-term traders tape. That's really where opportunity is. That's where money is being made. Those with longer time horizons, with macro opinions, are having a very difficult time navigating this 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 market. We're seeing large gap ups and gap downs more frequently here with, with news out of you know, Greece and, 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 you know, and, uh, you know, what's happening here in the States. And there's just so much, you know, push and pull and tug of war happening here. So, um, and it's been a very, very weak tape for the better part of the last, um, you know, six weeks or so. That being said, we need to take a look at, you know, tactical levels where, you know, opportunity exists with, with small pockets of risk. That's really what our specialty is and, and what we do uh, day in and day out. So let's take a look here at the spiders and I'm going to bring up the chart. Here's a daily uh, of the spiders. And we saw this large price movement to the upside this week. Yesterday gapping up uh, into the area of a declining 21 EMA. Uh, for those that have been to the active trader program, you know I love this trade. Uh, and selling off yesterday and now catching into what is now an eight that has turned up. We call this a catch play. Um, and this you know, this is the type of trade that has the potential to go higher. We, I suspect we might see some more, you know, basing in this area over the next couple of sessions. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, you know, maybe a, another day or two of some, some slightly downside, uh, you know, minor downside or even a little bit further of a pullback. But this to me has the potential of maybe giving us another rally leg up. Um, and I think the only way we're going to really be able to judge that fairly is with some more time. Time is our friend here, uh, which is why I started the broadcast and said it's a day trading market right now. And, you know, there's opportunity for those that are flexible and nimble enough uh, on some of the smaller time frames. And we'll look at that as well. But, you know, the S&P is trading back into resistance. Um, you know, we can go back and, you know, call this sort of the line in the sand. Um, this is an area that, you know, we're going to watch closely. It's that 133 to 134 spy area. Um, that, that I think if we can get above there and we can see volume again, I'd like to see volume come up a little bit. That would be a, a signal that we could see uh, higher prices. I know some are looking at this potential pattern as maybe development of, of uh, what could be, uh, you know, an inverted, you know, head and shoulders pattern. And what that basically would be would, would be higher lows on each side where we have a, a pivot low down here and then we would develop higher lows on each side. Now that's going to take time to develop. We don't have that yet. So that's, again, if this is going to happen, it's probably going to happen over the next, you know, five to 10 sessions. And then potentially we could see uh, a trade back up or, you know, this trend continues to develop and, and, you know, we can't really get through this resistance level and we, you know, we turn back down. So, you know, anything is possible here. I don't think it's, it's the time to make large bets on directional movement. I think it's the time to have, you know, tactical plays, with either this, you know, the market itself, with index-related instruments, spies, diamonds, cues, you know, the the the, you know, the Russell, anything that's index-related, uh, that's going to correlate, or you know, specific stock plays. There are specific stocks that have their own agenda, doing their own things, and we're going to look at some of those um, today. Let's move on. Again, another index I like to look at is the XII, institutional index, and it's very similar to the S and P's, and it's a measure of you know, the institutional holdings uh, by the largest institutions. So we're actually looking at, you know, real money flow um, and where real money flow is. And this, you know, again, very much like the S&Ps, we saw, you know, some excelling after a large directional movement in a short amount of time, you know, a, a basically a day, uh, a little bit of it over a day pullback and, you know, finding some support this morning, um, very much like the spider. So we're going to keep an eye on this as well to build some bullish pattern. I don't necessarily think we can go higher without, the appropriate setup uh, that tells us, you know, there is now a bullish setup in place and, and the market has um, the opportunity, the potential to go higher. Right now, we still have to respect that the trend is down um, and that, you know, stocks have been getting sold off in mass for the better part of the last month or two. Um, 
as far as the stocks, you know, stocks today, and these were very, very uh, calculated trades on the VTF this morning, McDonald's. McDonald's gapping down into prior support around 86. Perfect mean reversion trade. Um, and we actually caught this one on a 13 minute buy setup, which was down here. Gapping down into support, first leg up, two bar pullback, and then we get that trade, that mean reversion trade. So if you're not on the VTF, it's going to be harder to make money in some of these things as they are calculated day trades right now. TLT, the bonds, um, you know, big sell off this week as the market rallied, you know, gapping up today and selling off. Another example of mean reversion. Um, these are, you know, classic strategies that we teach like I said, in our active trader program. So, you know, if you are nimble enough and flexible enough to, you know, to maneuver from long to short one day to the next, there's opportunity here. If you are stuck in, you know, in, 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 in a higher time frame and you have to be long or you feel like you need to pick a bottom or something beyond that, it's going to be a very, very choppy tape to navigate and your P&L is probably going to see wild gyrations both up and down. And that's, you know, a much more difficult tape to navigate. But if you're flexible enough to day trade right now, I think it really is the path of least resistance. And the market will carve out some bullish pattern, like I said, with more time. So um, a couple trades that I just wanted to highlight here. Another one was Baker Hughes, BHI. Interesting looking chart, breaking down on the daily chart here. You can see coming out of this, you know, month and a half base to the downside. Um, and, you know, for those that were nimble enough on the, on the, on the VTF, you know, a nice 13 minute sell setup as well here. Uh, on some of the smaller time frames, and I suspect this one will probably, like I said, we're not at the close, but this one will probably close at or near uh, its 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 lower you know lower part of the day as it is breaking down. Um, some other stocks that were on the radar, you know, been on the radar, some of the bigger cap tech stocks, Google, you know, not much of a bounce here with the market, very very lackluster bounce, and you can you know see the volume even declining here um, as we you know gave us that that two to three day up move, so. You know, Google here speaks to us potentially of lower prices in the cards. And if it can't really get going, you know, over the next day or two with the market, um, we could see new lows here in Google, which wouldn't be uh, that much of a surprise. Really no buyers there at all. Apple, a little bit of a different story. Apple sort of hanging into a range. Um, you know, it's been a great trade for us for the better part of, you know, the last couple of years. But, you know, really going back six months, we had this great uptrend. And then, you know, we had this, you know, a... Uh, uh, this, this, this pretty substantial pullback, and there was a lot of money in there for, for the traders that were a little more flexible, both long and short. I'm gonna remove the candlesticks here. I'm actually going to uh, take a look at this stock, and we're gonna do something that I like to look at, which is just a moving average study. Um, and actually, we're gonna look really just at the 21 EMA here, and this is something that I do uh, from time to time. Uh, let me just take this off. I'm going to remove my eight. All right. So, okay. So I have a flat 21 EMA here on a daily chart. Again, this is Apple and I'm just doing this for educational purposes. This is just, like I said, this is definitely a good teaching tool here. Um, when you have a flat 21 EMA, it's a sign of a trendless tape uh, or a trendless stock. So this stock has been in a long uptrend. You know, we had a pullback and now our averages are basically flat. So from a trading perspective, when I see this, I know for me and for my traders, you know, that are, that, are, that are taught from a technical perspective, this is a stock you probably want to avoid unless you are looking for calculated day trades um, on smaller time frames. So here's a five minute chart or, you know, a, a 30 minute chart, you know, and you can see here, very, very whippy, lots of ups and downs and ebbs and flows here. Um, we did put in a nice low here on 550 and we, you know, we did bounce, but not the same type of trade that it has been over the last, you know, few weeks, few months. Um, and at some point the trend will reemerge or reset itself. And when it does, you know, we'll be more prepared to get back and, and, and reinitiate with some trades there in Apple. So the point here is I wanted to show you that this is a stock that has uh, a lot of eyeballs, a lot of leadership capability, uh, a lot of, a lot of liquidity, um, and for a long time, I've said, so goes Apple, so goes the market. And Apple to me is right now um, lacking a trend. And I think there's a lot of eyeballs that are going to say, um, you know, well, if it gets above 580 or this prior high, you know, you want to be long. And I, 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 I strongly caution that trade only because when you have a flat 21 EMA, most times breakouts where you get above a resistance level have a tendency to fail. 
and you start to see wild gyrations there. So keep an eye on that as the, uh, the days unfold here. As again, you know, having that knowledge and, and having that information can make you a much smarter and again, a much more profitable, uh, you know, more risk averse type of trader. So keep an eye on that as the, uh, as the days unfold. Um, <clears throat> Uh, going on, moving forward, we're going to look at some of the banks. We're going to look at Goldman. Um, again, banks to me, not like, like I said earlier with Google, not necessarily the healthiest place. Uh, Goldman saw a three-day, you know, a, a two-and-a-half-day move to the upside with the market, but retracing a, a substantial amount of that yesterday and not really doing much of anything today. So I don't really see an inflow of capital into the banks. We can also look at J.P. Morgan, um, you know, a little bit stronger than Goldman, but again, nothing that I would – you know, uh, dive into the long side and say, hey, I have to be long um, these stocks. So banks not really showing me personally a whole lot of leadership. I think they have to really prove themselves. They have to, you know, develop good bullish looking patterns and, and you know, show you some, some, some big volume on the upside. And it's just not there at this point. So, you know, I'm going to steer clear of the banks. And if they turn down, again, that could drag the market lower. So we need to look for the clues, look for the signs, evaluate some of the some of the leadership and, and, and what's going on. Some stocks that have actually been, that have acted very well. Expedia, uh, again, we talked about this a couple days ago, you know, breaking out of a base, basing up here, breaking out again, um, and, and closing the week relatively strong. Uh, so Expedia, another one that, that you want to keep on the radar for higher prices. Dean Foods, DF. Uh, again, stocks that are just showing, you know, not really trading in line with the market, doing their own thing, breaking out uh, DF, another one that you want to keep an eye on maybe for, for higher prices, um, you know, going into next week, still has a very bullish looking structure. Facebook, definitely not a bullish looking uh, stock here. We saw a little bit of a bounce off the 2550. Uh, that was around Wednesday. Very choppy bounce here. Not a lot of volume coming into the upside. And even today, um, we traded up to as high as uh, about 28 bucks, maybe a little bit under um, into you know this resistance zone or what could be a resistance zone here and tailing down a little bit today. So buyers still not willing to take a stand here for anything more than a day trade for you know a very short pocket of, of time. So still still a stock that I think needs to be avoided. I wouldn't be putting money here. There's just no reason to put money here. I think it's really more for uh, talk and, and the media than it is for actual, you know, smart money traders. Uh, that's my that's my opinion. Um, and at some point, if the stock becomes more bullish and has a better looking setup and structure, you know, we'll we'll evaluate it for for what it is. But right now, price, you know, what price says to me is the stock is not ready for higher prices. There's not an inflow of capital here. <clears throat> if anything, it's you know, shorts probably trying to cover, worried that there's going to be some sort of large upside move. But, you know, even every every time we attempt to go up, it, it you know, sellers seem to push it right back down. So that's really not where, um, you know, money flow, money flow is. So, you know, pretty sort of wide range there of, of, of what's going on right now. Just touching on a couple stocks, a couple sectors. Um, there's a lot of stocks that still are very weak out there, you know, that have a lot of eyeballs, Caterpillar, um, you know, uh, John Deere, um, you know, even Priceline for those that are more high beta, you know, we saw a nice rally last week. I think that's something that the bulls are trying to hang their hat on and, and say, look, if, if we're going to go higher, we're going to, we're going to develop a base, a high level base, something that says to us, Hey, higher prices could be in the cards. And like I said, to start the broadcast, the only way we're going to get that is just more time. So be patient. If you're looking to commit capital and looking to buy stocks or buy indexes, you know, be patient, be nimble. You don't want to chase up moves, especially in a downtrend. Um, and like I said, with the SPIs or the S&Ps, we still have this declining 21 EMA. It's still right now a downtrend, although, you know, we are trying to work our way higher and you're seeing a little bit more intraday to the upside. Um, again, chasing price has never made anybody any money. And if it's going to go higher, it's going to set up and build a nice bullish pattern. Uh, and we'll be, like I said, and I'm sure Scott has talked about, we'll be on top of it um, if and when that occurs. So as always, a plan trader is a profitable trader. I hope it was a great week for you. Um, get ready for next week. It's a good day trading tape. You have to have a good tactical plan in place uh, and be ready with, you know, very specific trades at specific areas. Um, and if you're not doing that, it's probably going to be a much harder, you know, tape to navigate. Um, so with that, have a great weekend and I will be back on the VTF on Monday. Take care.